Hey everyone, welcome to the Atari Hacker Podcast. Today we are going to go over a format that you guys really, really like. We've been doing it for several years now, and that is making predictions of what's going to happen next year in the SEO and self-publishing industry. We're also going to be reviewing last year's prediction to see how accurate they were and whether we are good at predicting this stuff, and that's not always the case. And finally, we'll go over your predictions that we ask you to answer to on Twitter, and we got some really good ones. So let's get started with this episode. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Atari Hacker Podcast. Today is our 300th episode and we are not dressed as Spartans for this episode. I'm sorry for everyone who was expecting that. Uh, but we're going to do a format that a lot of people are expecting and like every year, and that is the SEO prediction. So I think it's a good fitting topic for the 300th episode. Uh, there's going to be a lot of AI in this one because obviously a lot of people are talking about all these new AI stuff. Uh, we had an AI mastermind, AI content mastermind with uh, Atari Hacker Pro Platinum yesterday, etc. So lots of stuff about that. People on Twitter can't shut up about it. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. But before we talk about AI, we're going to talk about something way more interesting. It, that's how Mark is doing, you know? Well, I'm having a blast. I mean, SEO may not be the most glamorous field, but it's definitely <laughs> rewarding when your hard work pays off. Is that the AI uh, answer that someone wrote for, for you? Yes. <laughs> okay. So when you when you ask how how's it going, it's not actually how's it going. It's how's yeah, Chat it's kind GPT of weird. three think that Mark is going. Uh, yeah, I don't, I'm not. I'm not sure. I like this answer. Although it's it's a bit more inspired than most of your answers. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> so so you could argue it might be better. Maybe we'll just script a whole podcast like this and tell people yeah. But basically, we're not here to just talk about that. We're here to talk about the predictions we've done last year first. So we're gonna go and review last year's prediction. Then we're gonna make this year's prediction. Then we're gonna do a quick review of what people told me they were predicting on Twitter as well. I've asked people to, on Twitter what they thought, and we'll see what they are thinking and if it's kind of the same as us, not the same as us, etc. But let's jump in and let's talk about last year's prediction. What was the first one? So the first one last year was that reviews will be targeted more by Google. And I think we can say pretty soundly that this has been a yes, that was that was accurate. Um, we've seen successive review updates, the helpful mm -hmm. content update, which I don't know, wasn't so helpful in some cases. It's not about reviews only though, helpful content update. It was more about targeting AI content, that kind of stuff. Like AI sites tanked who is this helpful content update. And it feels like that's just a... Uh, the PR sure. name they gave to it, you know? <laughs> uh, but in between those, we've seen a lot of sites, you know, including one of our own, um, get hit, recover. Ours is still recovered, but some of them get hit, recover, hit, recover. This is like ping pong effect. Um, and it, it almost seems a little bit arbitrary when, you know, you look at some of the uh, sites which then overtook them in the rankings, which, yeah. which weren't affected. Um, you know, sometimes pretty objectively worse content. So yeah, it, it, I know affiliate marketers and SEOs like always always say, you know, Google's going after affiliates or going after reviews. They don't want affiliates. I, I think those statements can be a little bit extreme, um, but we have seen a, let's say like tightening up over the um, expected editorial level that, that um, Google wants to see on um, re reviews. I think that's um, in part because there's a lot of just rubbish reviews out there yeah. uh, but we're also seeing there's a lot of attention from in the us from like the government from the ftc around reviews and disingenuous um kind of statements and things like that um and i think there's they're working on something at the moment the ftc some new bill to police it i'm not exactly sure they haven't i haven't seen too much about it yeah but, google wants to show up and show it that they've done work for it so like yeah. they're actually ahead of it and look like a good corporation that they shouldn't be dismantled and broken as a monopoly basically for sure <laughs> yeah 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 because it's, it's a big concern for them actually in, in their position um one specific thing which we mentioned which we kind of got wrong though is december 2021 uh there was the review update guidance um and they mentioned about um encouraging sites to link out to multiple vendors uh, and so we saw some sites of try not just listing amazon but listing here are, you know five places you can buy this and provide that kind of price comparison offering um, most of the people i've spoken to admittedly anecdotally have all said that whenever they've tried to add more um, offers or places to, to buy it's just the conversion rates been terrible um, there's more clicks to get through. So it just, it hasn't been a good thing for, from, from them. And 
I haven't seen too many sites do it. And I, I don't know, my, my feeling is that the effect on rankings for that specific part of it hasn't really been a thing. Yeah, I feel like it's not there yet. Like a lot, like they, I wanted to say, like one thing that we got from Google is actual clear instructions for once on like what they want in product reviews. I mean, as clear as it can get from Google, I guess. Uh, and it's been pretty decent on like, yeah, link to multiple sellers, try to have like uh, in-hand uh, reviews. Uh, like there, there is documents that they're producing now for webmasters that are actually helpful. And that is a welcome change compared to what we've been used to in the past few years where it's been very generic, like, oh, try to create great content. There's nothing you can do to fix your size ranking with uh, core updates, just, just do great content, basically. Like, so now they're a bit more precise and thank God uh, they're addressing that. So I want to tip my hat off to Google. I give them a lot of shit, but this time I think uh, it is better. It is going in the right direction. Uh, I do wish they would produce like more polished content for webmasters. Like, I mean, apart from John Mueller getting on a quick dirty chat with the webmasters once in a while, like it's not very well put together. Matt Katz was doing a better job, let's be honest. Um, but yeah, it's still, it's still something. So overall, Google is steering us in the direction they want to see. And that's what we want as like webmasters. We want to work with Google so that they give us traffic and we give them the traffic, the content they want to show to their users and everyone is happy. Everyone has a thriving business and the users get high quality content. So that is some positive thing that came from that uh, review update, I think. So the next point that we made was that guest post farms will get hit. And I'm not going to say no completely, but I think we can put this in the no camp. It's like a no slash not It's not really. as clear hit. Exactly. So they are, I think, as brazen as they were a year ago. And that was one of the things we said. Uh, the, Google would try and kind of stop them from acting in the way they do um, in a more public way. And that doesn't seem to have happened. Um, I do think and I really do feel that they have been kind of more stealthily hit. Um, and the links from those types of sites, we will get into that because it does feature in one of our predictions for 2023. Um, I, I, I feel like people just aren't really kind of aware or like everybody is not aware of what's going on with these these sites and, and kind of the impact they have on or, or don't have on, on link building. Many sites are still using this model and uh, the fact that people are still paying for these links is encouraging more and more sites to sell guest posts, turn into guest post farms, build more kind of fake sites and the, the that are guest post farms. And yeah, it's just not much has really changed from a brazenness perspective, I guess. Let's jump to the next one, which was Cal Roof's prediction. Actually, we had guests last year. So what did he predict? So he predicted that uh, there would be a, an increase in competition um, in the first half of the year due to everything that was going on in the world at the time. Um, and that Google would continue to go after affiliate sites. And he also sort of was explaining how planning ahead was really important and having a good idea not of what you're gonna do uh, so as not to get caught off by like shiny object syndrome and, and things like that was uh, very important as well. Google did, I think, continue to go the after update, affiliate yeah. sites. Yep. Um, or rather the bad ones, um, specifically, you know, thin content and, and all that. He, Kyle also mentioned about, um, topical relevancy becoming more and more of a thing. Um, it's definitely become very popular in the industry um, as, a, as a term in um, in 2022. Um, so yeah, um, there are actually like kind of multiple things going on there. Um, but I think more or less, yeah, I mean, he was, he was right about the direction of, of most of those things. Yeah, I mean, also Google is not going after all affiliate sites. Google doesn't hate affiliate sites, I think. They just hate low quality sites, low effort sites, et cetera. And I think that's a distinction to make because I, I see this shortcut being made so fast, so quickly by people. It's like they end up being like, oh, Google hates all affiliates and they want to kill us, et cetera. No, they don't want that. They just want better sites ranking on Google. If your site has affiliate links, but your pages are great, Google's happy to rank you. If your site is kind of shit, you've never really looked into the product category. You can't talk about it. You've just like, you haven't worked really hard on your content. Yeah, Google is going after you. Like, that's pretty much what it is. I also think in terms of uh, topical relevancy, I think it has increased in how much it matters in the algorithm, but maybe not as much as it has increased in popularity in the SEO industry, if you know what I mean. <laughs> like, um, like, I think there's a little bit of a disproportionate uh, gain in popularity compared to uh, 
the objective increase in like how much it matters, you know, like the, the relevancy of your links, especially, I think is very important, for example, right now, that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's very, very trendy right now in the SEO industry. I think it's also important to not get caught into forgetting the basics and the important things that nobody's talking about right now because they're focused on this, uh, that also matter some quite often more even, you know, uh, sure. Yeah, let's go to the next one, which was AI content will replace cheap writers. Has it so, done that? I put this down as a yes. Um, uh, it's not like a super strong yes. I think it's a yes, but in a more roundabout way. So I think what's happening is if you look at Text Broker, iWriter, Upwork, some of these other platforms is a lot of writers are now using Jasper and Phrase and other tools to um create content and it's you know the, for the cheap writers the not so good writers um what they can produce with that is comparable to what they would produce you know in a hurried fashion before they were able to use that so uh, and they're going to do use these tools to produce content much faster um so you are getting AI content, although it's not always marketed, marketed or, as, <laughs> um, you know, sold as AI content. Um, and I think a lot of site owners, a lot of uh, people who are buying content are, just aren't aware of it, um, which is arguably problematic, though it, it kind of depends on your, your on your point of view. Um, also, uh, this chat GPT, um, they developed since it's come out, it's it's kind of like pushed the industry forward a lot. Um, and it's shown- It's been that, one week, so it's like, you know, give something. Like yeah, it's, it's just this kind of like light bulb moment of like, okay, we were here, now we're actually like a, quite a bit further on. And there, there there's, I think people are starting to see the potential of this in a practical use case for, you know, real sites, not just sites that want to kind of like spam hundreds of thousands of, AI content um, on low competition keywords. Uh, so yeah, interesting times for sure. Um, and we're definitely going to be talking a lot a lot about AI content and AI um, later yeah. in the, the episode today. Even this year, I think in the next year, we'll talk a lot about it. Um, but I think it, also what's interesting is like the fact that uh, site owners are getting AI content despite the fact that they're not necessarily asking for it is the reason for the rise of AI detection content uh, tools now. It's like, so like now there's like a new industry rising up, which is like, okay, you, you paste the content you're getting from freelancers. Uh, I think Spencer launched one called originality.ai, but there's several like kind of free ones, etc. And to be honest, most of the time, it seems to be doing a decent job from my tests. I've also made it bleep. So I've made it like, you know, pasted AI content. It was like, oh, it's original. So it doesn't always work, but it kind of like works uh, most of the time, I would say. Uh, and yeah, it's an interesting kind of like cat and mouse game, not only between site owners and Google, but also between site owners and writers. And like site owners are like exactly in the middle, having to mediate between the freelance writers and Google, basically taking that responsibility. And Google is going to use this, these, the site owners as that kind of like middle layer that they, is going to be pressed for editorial quality by punishing them with updates if they are publishing the wrong content on their site. So it's going to be an interesting one. And I think it's going to be a little stressful for site owners, uh, especially everyone has a different stance at this point. And this chat GPT is a step forward, uh, but it's also one week in. So we're not exactly sure how far that's going to go, etc. Like um, it's going to be paid at some point as well, right? It's free now. At some point people are going to pay every time they prompt. So it's like, it's going to be, uh, how expensive is it going to get, et cetera? Like the economics of this, how is it going to work? Like uh, it's it's an interesting time, but whether you like AI or not, you're going to have to kind of address it this year, I think. Let's talk about the next one. So next one was from Michel from Surfer SEO. Um, and his prediction was that AI would drive down the cost of content. And this is a kind of, uh, it, I would say not really, but sometimes uh, I think that as a company, if you want to produce a lot of AI content, you can now, or you produce a lot of content rather, you can use AI to do a kind of okay job and produce a lot very cheap. So yes, that's, that's true. But what hasn't happened is that the kind of bottom has fallen out of the industry and then it's dragged down the cost of all content. Um, I would say if anything, content's gotten more expensive in 2022 rather than less. And that's partly due to, you know, inflation and, 
I was gonna say, I think the cheap, cheap content didn't really increase that much in price in a high inflationary world. Essentially, content got cheaper with AI. It's just that it didn't increase in price, and that is cheaper compared to like the average inflation. So, like, you can still find like few cents per world content. It's just like now it's generated by Jasper instead of like some some random and you get any uneducated but writer writing it the, the, the main thing was that there wasn't a trickle down effect on more expensive content like the hiring nah. content didn't become cheaper but it didn't drag it down um so it's not good enough for that it's not good enough to affect the top tier it's just good enough to affect the bottom tier at this point um i mean at least it was until this chat uh, gpt i think now medium tier content is going to start being affected like top top tier content still not like you know like data driven content that kind of stuff it can do that uh it's not ready yet um but like very decently explained informational content for uh, medium complexity questions yeah i think it's going to start being affected but it doesn't drive the cost of content it just increases productivity rather uh let's draw on the next one which was glenn uh, which say that focusing on surprising and delighting visitors is going to reap rewards for people. Yeah, so I think this sort of came from the idea that you know more and more sites are becoming very samey with like sa very similar content, similar um, presentation, and that sites are going to have to do more creative and cool things to kind of stand out. Um, and he gave a few examples of like you know cool 404 pages or you know really nice designs and so getting links from kind of design blogs and roundups and things like that um, and while this has been um, the case certainly um, I don't really it hasn't really become like a mainstream thing that every site is trying to do this I think people are still competing over the basics um, at least in the industries we've we've been looking at, right? Yeah, um, you know, I mean, you find examples like, like I mean, I, I quote this one to Hoops Geek all the time, right? It's like DR forty, fifty, not very like medium DR, still like three hundred k traffic in a very competitive like B two B two C uh, closing niche. I mean, the shoes basically, and and they're doing really well. Like they're doing overly well compared to their level of authority and compared to their competition, etc. And so sites that actually do this right, I think, do get rewarded. But it requires too much talent for this to become widespread. It's more going to be these kind of like stories of like a few sites built really well, doing really, really well, despite not having lots of links, et cetera. But it's not easy to achieve. And, uh, and I just don't think the industry has the talent to pull that off like on every single site that comes out. So I think most sites are going to be average. That's what average is, right? It's like what most people do. Um, and then some of these really, really well done sites, though, they do get rewarded and they do do well. Uh, building sites a little bit differently, building them around databases, um, making these pages that are not necessarily full of like written content, but rather like graphs and like comparisons of prices between retailers, things like that, that add value. Uh, it's being more rewarded than it was before. So it's like, I think it was like, it's funny because I actually was like, ah, I don't see this at the beginning, but actually I can pinpoint to like several examples of sites doing that and now being rewarded for it, which... Uh, but I don't think the industry has realized yet. I think people are still behind. They still uh, default WordPress team, slap a lot of content on it, etc. But I think that the people who do take the time and effort to make something that goes beyond that now have the opportunity to get rewarded. And that's a good thing. That's, that actually rewards people from not just making cookie cutter content anymore. Yep. So let's move on to the next one then. Um, the next prediction was from us. And we, uh, we said that good affiliate marketers will expand into info content and sell products more. Well, half um, of it is true. Well, everyone's talking about the ratio of like info content to commercial content and how like sites without enough info content are getting penalized. And like there's all that, that current of thinking in the industry right now. And so like a lot of affiliate marketers have expanded info content. They just don't sell products with it. They put yeah. ads on it instead. So I, I l let me rephrase. So the, the way it was phrased was, we'll expand into info content that sells products. Okay, so that is not- sell products. Yeah. So that that was like a single prediction. And while yes, you're right, info content, it's, it's not really been, I mean, there are some people who have done it, but it's more been like an ads play um, rather than... Uh, it's also been a, a way around Google updates. Like people believe that it's going to protect them from Google updates. Like this whole topical relevancy, you know, treating of your core topics if you don't have these info pages on your site, etc. So people have been growing a lot more info content on affiliate sites, that's for sure. Like rather than just fully going for commercial content. Uh, still not fully convinced of, of that, to be honest. Like um, I'd like... <laughs> 
like that site that we say the like had issues has now fully recovered to its peak traffic and uh and has had no extra info content added on it uh for example so like i'm still not fully convinced but um but affiliate marketers did expand into info content just for different reasons basically the final prediction we have was from mark mars um and he said that content is going to become both harder and easier so what he meant by that was that as um more and more competition especially from like shitty sites kind of came into the market they will get hit and then go away and therefore there will be less competition eventually um, but i don't really see that's happened it's not like all the people making shitty affiliate sites have gone away and it's just suddenly like become become a lot easier i'd say it's competition like those people are just refining their their strategies and getting better and better so like even the not so good people that the average level of that has increased significantly and that's obviously like increased the competition higher up um so i i just think it's become more competitive and i don't think it's really much has gotten easier no i mean sense. seo is always getting slightly harder if you look at the like we all complain we say google gets it wrong etc but look at the quality of content today versus five years ago uh, content in google is still better and you still find uh it's just like our standard for quality has also increased therefore our perception of it might not be higher but objectively, you'll find better web pages ranking for the topics you're Googling. So it, it is getting harder, but that's also there's more and more tools that help us achieve that better quality content. So, yeah. He, he also said that uh, fewer quality links um, would matter more uh, than many average quality. I agree links. with that. Um, yeah, which I think is, is, is very true. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay, so that's pretty much all the predictions for last year. Uh, let's do the ones for this year and see which ones will be wrong. Uh, so I think the first one I put was uh, something that is kind of a disclaimer for all of this. And that is that SEO will be 95% the same as this year. <laughs> which like, a lot of people are talking about this AI stuff right now. A lot of people are like, you know, chatting about how everything's going to change and the industry is over, da, 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 da. The truth is these kind of like large scale changes take a really long time to happen and it's like it's not easy to do that and it's very very likely that in one year from now so like now we're recording this at the beginning of december the seo will be mostly the same like there you still need to do content you still need to do links the way you do content might sl change slightly but i don't think all your content is going to be written by ai at that point uh, i don't think link building is going to vary different like massively like it might again the quality threshold might have been pushed up you know, like, so like the, the shittier stuff you're doing might not work as well anymore. Uh, mostly SEO will be the same. I don't know what you think about that. And I think it's important to tell that to people because quickly they can take what we say and just essentially talk about the war, world falling apart, you know? I think that if you look at any major, major worldwide change throughout history, I'm talking about, you know, railroads and Electric electricity yeah, yeah. and even cars in general like when they for, they first came out um you know computers the internet itself um those things were all predicted to change everything in everyone's life really really quickly and while they did have massive impacts the actual change to the overall global economy from each of those things um was actually only about i think it was like 15 percent. i read somewhere um so five percent change from seo in a year then i, I think you know you, you're probably about right with that. Um, I think AI content has the potential to change SEO about 15%, I would say, over the long run. Yeah, and it's, it takes time. Most importantly, it's like, um, it's not going to be all done in one year. Like, it's like uh, APIs come out, then you need to kind of like find uses for them. Especially this stuff is complex. Most people don't know how to use it. They need to learn how to do this, etc. Like, it will take time and it will take more than one year. And in one year, none of, none of that brand new stuff is going to be fully figured out to the point that it will have figured out and deployed to the point that it will have changed the industry. Like it takes much, much longer than that. And so don't panic. Most of us here will probably still be here. Most of the stuff you're doing is probably going to still be here. If you are the bottom of the barrel in what you're doing in content and links, yes, you might be worried. Uh, but if you're not, you'll be fine. Um, on that, let's get started with the first one, I'd say. Uh, and that was yours. So go ahead. Wasn't that the first prediction? 
I mean, yeah, or was okay. that just a, that was I guess just a that's a pretty, thing. I guess we can put that this way. My score is higher next year, right? Um, okay, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll come back and check that. In a and then next year, we'll everything has changed. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the, well, my first one was that generic links will lose more actual and perceived value. So we spoke a lot about link fo- link farms on on this podcast uh, throughout 2022. Um, we talked about you know sites like soup.io, it's DR78, it's got no traffic, used to have a couple hundred K, lost it all. It's been sort of repurposing this generic everything site that has a category for everything, obviously selling links, um, lots of kind of CBD casino stuff on there, but also um, legit sites, you know, real estate and, you know, just any, any other type of business is getting links from sites like this. Now, um, I, I'm not going to repeat everything we said in that, in that podcast. This prediction is more that the knowledge that these sites are not positively impacting your rankings or links from these sites are not positive, positively impacting your rankings will start to trickle down because they don't. And, because they don't, sites and the client sites will start to um, not see results and people will just become more aware of it and put pressure on agencies who are the ones buying most of these these links on these sites to not do so. I think there'll be a kind of leveling up of knowledge and awareness of them and sites um, and agencies will start to shift away from buying tons of these generic links. So that's my my prediction. Yeah, um, I wouldn't expect Google to have a to make any kind of big statement and say, "Oh, don't do this; it's terrible." Like, what, or the you know generic site link update or anything like that. I don't think that's going to be a thing. I think what they've already done is just quietly cut the effect that these links have. And my prediction is more about people beginning to realize that. Yeah, I, I emphasis on beginning. It's I think it takes longer than we expect for people to actually change their habits on this. Um, but what I expect... Yeah, I mean, we still get people contacting yeah. <laughs> us asking if, you know, guest post directories or e-sign articles and these kinds yeah, of it takes you know, a 10-year-old while. tactics are still worthwhile. I, it's not only that, but like also a lot of people in our industry have a vested interest in maintaining that belief because they sell links themselves. Uh, like, I mean, you can see like most people, we don't have a link service at this point, but like we've tried several, etc. And it's like many people that produce content have a vested interest in maintaining that belief. They make lots of money doing that. Um, and so like that will participate in maintaining that illusion because obviously lots of these services rely on these kind of sites to do that. I think there's going to be more like internal crisis in these services that are going to realize that faster than clients because they'll be able to look at all their clients and see the slowing results of what they're doing. And I think that's all like the, like, you know, like updates roll out and like, a third of their clients got hit or something like that, that kind of stuff uh, could happen. And and sometimes these hits are not hits. They're just devaluations of links probably. And it's like, well, it counted. Now it doesn't count anymore. You're dropping in rankings, you know? Yeah, I think uh, the industry is going to start looking at this. I think a lot of clients will be quite obvious. Like they, they won't they won't get it. They, they will be oblivious, not obvious uh, to, to the changes. And it's going to take more than that. They will only start realizing at the end of the year. So I wouldn't expect like big, uh, a big shift, but I would expect like the more higher level of SEO circles. Like, you know, when we do these masterminds in Atelier Hacker Pro Platinum, et cetera, like you can see most people have moved away from that kind of stuff uh, and are doing different things. And uh, and clearly, I think it's gonna go down to like the middle tier of marketers now, from the top tier to the middle tier, something like this. Uh, okay, my next prediction is that there will be more core updates and helpful content updates that will roll and misfire. <laughs> because we've talked about that. Uh, it seems like basically small sites often get affected by these updates without the intention of Google to penalize these sites. That's why you see these sites kind of like tank, then come back, then tank, then come back. And what is interesting with these updates is um, it's like I follow a lot of like groups where people like share these stories of what happened, etc. And everyone's trying to completely revamp their site, change everything, etc. And then when the site jumps back up, it's like, oh my god, I did these three things. Therefore, that's why the site went back up, etc. And that's why Google. And then you know, a mythology and legends about SEO are being created on these groups, you know, um, because. 
we've had sites that did that and we've changed absolutely nothing and we're back to all time high traffic at this point. Um, and it's just that Google themselves are trying to figure stuff out. It's kind of like out of our control at this point uh, on like what's gonna work and not work. We have been sites that were penalized a long, long time ago that are starting to emerge back, back, back up in rankings, doing absolutely nothing, publishing no content, uh, removing no links, disavowing nothing. Still doing okay. So I think it's still gonna be a bit of a roller coaster next year because, well, yeah, there's all this new AI content. In the eyes of Google, AI content is still uh, spam. It's like automated generated content. And the official policy is like, it's spam. Regardless of how you use it, it's spam. That's what John Mueller said. Uh, I disagree with him. I think if you use it right, you can probably output great content, but that's the official policy right now. If they maintain that policy, they'll probably go after some of it. Uh, probably the lowest level again. Like, you know, it's like, uh, there's that uh, that quote that someone told me one day was like, if you get run after by a bear, uh, you don't need to run faster than the bear. You just need to run faster than the slowest guy in your group. Um, and it's kind of like, that's pretty much a good, uh, is this a good energy or not? You'll tell me, Mark. Uh, but, but that's how I, mean, I see AI true, content. But... That's how I see AI content and all these things uh, going right now. So it's like, as long as you're not at the bottom of the barrel, you'll probably be fine. The thing that I see as well is the more trust signals a site has, the more stable they are in these updates. I mean, I'll tell you like a good example, right? We have more trust signals than on many other sites. And honestly, we've never been affected by any of these updates. Like if we never, it's never, I'm saying that, touching wood. <laughs> like, you know, as I say that, it happens. Uh, but so far, nothing has happened. And I think the big difference is like, there's much more trust factors tied to this. We put our real face, we have a podcast, we're on YouTube. Um, like we have uh, quotes from like big uh, industry uh, leaders, etc. People talk about us, etc. And that helps a lot. So uh, I'll talk about another prediction related to that. But I think uh, if you want it, if if I wanted to try to avoid the roller coaster, I'd work on my trust signals and and things that are not necessarily like common knowledge to like increase your rankings, but rather make you look like a real business. That's kind of like my opinion. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. Um, my next prediction is that 2023 will be uh, the year of the ads rush. So we, we're seeing three interesting trends in the industry right now. So ad RPMs have been increasing for many years now um, to the point where they're almost comparable, sometimes more comparable with uh, affiliate revenue in certain niches. Um, affiliate content, affiliate competition is getting more competitive and there's a perception that Google is going after it. Um, and then AI content is getting a lot better. So these three things together, well, we could also uh, add the topical relevancy thing where, you know, putting, producing lots of content about a topic is seen as a strong ranking signal or there's a perception that that's the case at least. So these four things, I guess, combined, um, to a situation where you, I think we're going to see sites produce, producing lots of info, info content, um, completely covering a topic, going for ad revenue, and kind of using that as a as a growth strategy. Um, the shit affiliates, uh, those people who are getting producing thin content, getting hit, um, I think they stand much more of a chance of um, doing well for a longer period of time if they shift their attention towards the um, doing the same kind of strategies in, in the ad space. Um, I still think quality will win outright. So this isn't a, a race to the bottom. It's just, we will see more people going into, into the ad space because of all of these factors combined. Yeah. I, I mean, ads are definitely like a stronger monetization method. They were like three, four years ago for sure. Um, so uh, it, it is very competitive these days and uh, I can see a lot of affiliates here shifting to using ads or mixing things or, and, and yeah, together with topical relevancy, it's a kind of a no brainer. If, if you buy into that, then you're going to create info content. How do you make money with that? It's going to be ads. Uh, ads or building an email is pretty much the only ways that are viable to make decent money with this. So, and those yeah. are, those are kind of, uh, there's a bit of an overlap there as well, you know, so if you're, if you have a lot of info content, you can start putting pop-ups, start collecting emails, um, start growing an, an audience that way as well, because it's much easier to get a lot more visitors than it is with, you know, affiliate content just because of competition levels and vo search volumes. It is, but also sometimes the intent of these long tail queries is not exactly the best uh, to like start selling stuff to people. Like if people are looking for the solution to a specific problem, like my blinds are blocked. How do I unblock them? Because I can't, I can't sleep at night. Like capturing that email, 
I mean, unless you say... Although, like, to, to just, you know, put a contrarian perspective there, if someone's searching for, you know, best VPN for Venezuela, after you've given them the answer, they don't really want to sign up to you. Yeah, exactly. VPN Especially on a privacy so. site. Like, <laughs> I mean, that was a, a dilemma that we faced in the past. <laughs> it's like, yeah, people don't want to give their info on a privacy site. So therefore, that is not a good, uh, a good one. Uh, yeah, okay. And also ad networks got a lot, a lot better. Like they're, they're great companies like Mediavine, AdThrive, even Ezoic to some extent that like they're, they're, they're pushing to like help content creators, they're building communities, they're doing all of that. They are good companies, much more than affiliate networks have ever been, to be honest. <laughs> and I think that also plays uh, to that. And honestly, if some affiliate networks could watch what the ad networks are doing, uh, yeah, look at what they're doing because that's how you grow a community of people who drive traffic for you and make you money. Uh, the next one is, I think there will be another wave of SEO is dead uh, with this uh, chat GPT growth. Basically, it's already, uh, you know, when I asked the predictions on Twitter and we'll go over that in a second, it was all about AI pretty much like 80%. Uh, but overall, the thing is um, these, these chat AIs actually now start doing a better job than Googling at answering a lot of questions. And so that the question is like, it's not even the end of SEO, it's the end of Google <laughs> for some uh, for some stuff. So it's like, it, it looks to me like either Google is going to implement some of this into their search results. And it could be literally, you could be Googling and then you get an answer, but then you can keep chatting with Google and it just kind of like starts expanding on the sub. Um, or, uh, or yeah, there could be some people that do that. But another thing that I wanted to say is that old habits die hard. It's like... Everyone talking about this on Twitter right now, et cetera. They're like tech enthusiasts, early adopters, like new technology, et cetera. My mom doesn't give a shit about uh, chat GPT. Uh, she still watches TV. My grandparents still listen to radio, et cetera. Like, you know what I mean? Like we don't change so fast. And I think um, by the time my mom is comfortable chatting with an AI about her health problems, it's going to be a while. Uh, and, uh, and Google still has like a lot of time in front of them. And I don't think SEO will be dead. I think if anything, it's just going to create a new category, but, you know, it's just going to create something on top of our, all the Google searches, etc. Uh, on top of that. And also, I think Google is just going to implement some version of that in the search if it becomes popular. It's kind of like how every social media is now TikTok because TikTok has been so popular. Um, Google is going to become a bit of a chatbot if that's what becomes popular and they have the technology, Google Assistant is really good. They have all the index data, they understand the content because they have to, to rank you, et cetera. Like they have all the pieces in their hands. There's no reason it wouldn't happen. So I don't think SEO would be dead, but I think there would be a wave of like, oh my God, with this new stuff, SEO is dead. Well, why are you doing SEO? People questioning, people quitting the industry, et cetera. That's gonna happen. Okay, so next one is uh, people will finally figure out how to use AI in their content. Uh, in the last 18 months, we've seen people try and sort of spam AI content, these sites that produce, you know, 200,000 posts, uh, occasionally successful, um, more often than not, they get hit, um, go back down to, to zero. We've also seen cheaper writers start using AI and pass it off as, as their own content. Um, we've seen occasionally people use AI as kind of like an assistant to get over a bit of writer's block, but it just it hasn't quite been all there yet, um, especially if you're trying to produce, you know, medium or top end content. Uh, what's clear at the moment is that you can't just press a button and get a finished article. I think a lot of people had hoped that that was the case, and a lot of AI companies have kind of subtly marketed that, that yeah. as a as a as an option, but it's not really something that's realistic. However, two things are changing. One, AI content is getting better. So chat GPT, um, we've seen the potential that that can, that can offer. Next year, we're going to see, um, I think GPT-4, which is the next iteration of the underlying algorithm, which um, Jarvis and most, most of the other AI tools um, use, AI content tools use. Um, so the underlying text getting, getting better, a lot more convincing, and there are use cases beyond just outputting content. Um, for like researching, planning, organizing information, even things like, you know, producing web pages, tables. I saw someone on Twitter make a, a WordPress plugin um, through using AI. Uh, we've also got video and image uh, AI now as well. So that's going to become more of a thing. Um, so the technology is getting better and it will continue to get better um, a lot next year. 
Uh, but more importantly is people are starting to learn how to control it and how to manipulate it to get what they want. Uh, using a computer today is pretty much ubiquitous for most, most people under 50. Um, but it wasn't always that way. Um, I remember in the early 1990s, my mom went to a computer class and on her first day, the teacher stood up at the front of the class um, and was like, hi everybody, so we're gonna use computers today. This is a mouse. When you move it around the screen, when you move it around, the point you're on your screen moves. And about half the class picked up their mouse and started moving it around like this in the air, not moving it around <laughs> on the on the desk. Was your mom because teaching just... computers to kids? No, no, she was a student in the class. Ah, okay, um, okay. It was like an adult, adult um, IT class. So that was then, and we're kind of at that stage now with AI content. It's like, oh, it can do all these cool things. And people are just like, oh, press the button, give me content. It's like, well, that's not quite really how, how you can get the most out of it. Um, so how you can get the most out of it is that um, it, it learns fast. So you need to be able to tell it what's wrong with what it's producing or give it input, give it data, give it some kind of reference for what you want. And there's, there's two elements of that. First is knowing what you want. I think a lot of people, ourselves included, we don't always know exactly what we want from, from content. We haven't really broken it down to its skeleton form of exactly what the first sentence, the first paragraph is going to communicate, whether we're going to have a personal anecdote here, whether we're going to mention this thing here and exactly how we're going to structure it. We don't go to that level of detail because as we're writing it or, or as a professional writer is creating the content, they kind of figure those stuff, those things as, as they go. Um, but if you do spend the time to go into that level of detail, then it will enable you to know what you want. And then the next stage is being able to tell the AI exactly what you want and communicate that um, to it. And we've seen that using ChatGPT, for example, you can give it very clear instructions like write in a more casual tone or change the second paragraph to reflect such and such a statement or whatever it is. Um, and that, those are kind of very basic, very generic um, instructions, but they make a really big difference quite quickly, especially if you if you add a few of them. Um, but there are people who have taken things, you know, 20 levels further and are almost like coding it in a way, like, oh, ignore these types of statements, add this thing. Um, I, I don't even know half the stuff they're, they're doing because it's almost like programming coding in a way. So I think that people will start to start to see the potential of what they can do by learning how to code. It's not really coding, but give it the instructions it needs to get the output that you now know what it is you you want. And I think that that AI coding will be a hot hot thing. And you know maybe all these blockchain developers who are currently looking for work will uh, will yeah. find something there. Well, I think that's something that people don't realize. People imagine that AI is going to be all easy and simple and everything. And it actually, it's going to be a skill. And also, I'm not worried as a content creator um, because there will be a job of like operating that AI the same way as like people had to operate computers at the beginning. Uh, and like it was complicated and difficult. It will get better with time and easier with time, etc. But there is a skill set here that is, in my opinion, very, 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 very good to pick up now because very few people do that. Uh, I've personally been hanging out on the Mid Journey Discord. If you don't know what this is, Mid Journey is like an image generation like DALI. But the way you generate images is you're actually generated by writing a comment on a public channel. And so I can see people's comments on it and I see what they write to generate like really amazing images. Actually, it's really good mid journey. I would say, I would argue it might be better than uh, DALI actually in terms of quality of images. Um, but you see people writing like huge paragraphs of stuff and being very precise and 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 what details they put in there. Like, uh, like they put like, isolated object, low angle, like, you know, low angle view to see which angle the camera is at when you create the image. They do like all of that. They talk about the colors. They put hex codes of the colors they want to see in the images. They put all of that. And that, that will generate like a much nicer output than if you write just like, make me an image of a girl holding a flower or something. Um, and so it's the same for these language models for all of that. And, and that skill 
is the future to be honest i think so i think uh, give give it a few years and like everyone will need to learn how to do that anyway if you want to operate a comp like it's going to be operating a computer that will be that that will be and then everyone will kind of be programming without programming um so i yeah if I, if there's a skill to pick up next year i think it's that one it's just like uh, operating ai and putting uh, prompts and inputs that are highly accurate and learning how to kind of like predict what you will get out of it through experience that will that if you if you're like gonna graduate soon or something like that and you want to pick up a skill that's the one okay the next one uh, that i put in there was build uh, building an authentic brand will be more rewarded than ever before uh and i think and that still ties back to this AI stuff, because if AI is really good at answering generic questions, and I think it's kind of like a duality with like the ad rush you talked about. Like if AI generates that kind of like essentially ads content is going is generally answering questions, tutorials, that kind of stuff, right? But that content is the one that AI is really good at writing. Um, and I feel like if Google starts implementing this kind of stuff in the search results, probably not next year. I mean, maybe next year we'll get a first version of it, but eventually. Um, the content they will put around in the search field, they'll put like a chat with an AI or something like results. And then around they'll put like content from experts that like, you know, all this EAT, trust, uh, et cetera. And then real life reviews with like TikTok videos, which are already in Google, um, YouTube videos, et cetera. And, I f and overall, it just feels like mixing that with like Google pushing for EAT and trying to build these signals, et cetera. It has done quite well to build like a brand where you get the products in hand, where you uh, share real life stories, etc., and you you actually involve yourself in your niche rather than just generate generating a bunch of generic content. Uh, and so that kind of brand works really well. I think Kevin from Epic Gardening is a good example of that. Someone who is doing really well. He's not part, like he's doing okay in SEO, but SEO is not the reason he's so big. I think it's from him building that real brand, building real followers, etc. So. Uh, I think it's going to be so a mix. So are we going to see you on TikTok next year, Gal? Ah, uh, we have a new video editor starting soon, so there's a chance, actually. Um, that doesn't mean I'm going to do anything special, but like we'll edit formats for TikToks, etc. But I do think that people who do that will get outsized returns because Google's pushing for EAT, because generic content uh, seems that eventually AI will take care of a lot of it. Um, and so like I could see this, I could see search results being a mix of very human content, you know, like full of emotions, feelings, real life stuff, etc., mixed with AI content written to for the occasion tailored to the query, you know, and that would be probably better search results. Uh, so maybe that is a little bit looking further. I'm not sure at the end of next year it will be uh, something good, but yeah, like real experiences from real experts pushing yourself into your industry will probably be more rewarding next year than it will be. And also just in general, getting traction on these platforms has never been so easy. Like a lot of people I see making experiments with like short videos, like on YouTube, not even on TikTok and growing channels really fast, for example, it's not difficult to do that anymore. And it's realistic within a niche to grow an audience uh, using these platforms faster than you would uh, just using Google. So my recommendation is start touching on multiple channels, not just do SEO, because eventually that will benefit your SEO. Uh, the next one is mine too, actually. Uh, and that one is it's an interesting one. It goes back to Glenn's prediction for last year. So I don't think it was true for last year. But again, going back to this AI revolution, I put that site building will become more about UX organizing and curating information than the content production itself, right? So, I mean, the content production itself, I think it will matter. But I think Google will be looking to reward sites that are organized properly. So again, I put this example of the Hoops Geek and their uh, single product pages, right? So like if you take a model of shoes, they have like an expert rating, a user rating, they have these like scores with these bars, etc. And that is not really a lot of text content, classic SEO stuff that you would expect. It's more about organizing, making a summary page with uh, all the reviews, etc. And just giving that information at a glance. And I think the skill of people building great sites will be more about, you know, this this kind of like mental exercise of organizing information and giving a good experience, making investing in tech as well, I think is very important, like making like sortable tables so you can quickly find the information you want, et cetera, rather than putting a generic WordPress blog with like a thousand pages uh, on it. I think that's that might work next year, but long term is going to be a, is going to be a, a little complicated when content can be generated in the click of a button, think, basically. I, I think this is this is true when the um, 
you know, these things more directly affect the content rather than, you know, they're just generic things on the site that site that are kind of cool. So, you know, um, like if you're organizing the information in your review to better explain what you're you're saying and, you know, showing cool tables or graphs or whatever. Yeah. Then, yeah. I think I think that's where that's going to be rewarded. The, the kind of value is. Yeah. yeah. So it's like exactly that, like visualize your information, for example, that would be rather than just writing words, you know, it feels like writing words is like, it's becoming old internet now, let's just say that. And so like, why do you still need the words right now? Because to satisfy search engines, et cetera, like uh, I, I, I can see that how like actually going beyond that and not just copy pasting a Google doc on the web page is going to add more and more value. So it, it can come from your formatting. It can come from, there's lots of plugins to do um, graphs on your site. Like, you know, you put a table and it just makes it a graph, like interactive, you can mouse over this kind of stuff, like uh, price, you know, price evolutions in price, com in like, for example, seeing the evolution of the price of an item over time. Um, let's say you're reviewing monitors, for example, for computers, like the, the prices drop all, over time, right? And it would be nice to like have the graph of the evolution of that, for example. So capturing that data every week and then plotting that, et cetera, and paying a dev to do that. That kind of information on a review page, I think would add, like would be part of that. And I think the, the kind of size to do that, I mean, look, RTings, also a site that's like not that old, but like doing really well because they do a lot of that kind of stuff of like uh, visualizing that data. That's the future. It's uh, you can probably do fine next year without it, but we'll I probably have a lot more examples of sites doing well with it by the end of next year, I would say. Uh, and the last one that I put was Google Shopping queries will become more refined. And shopping queries, I include review keywords in there, right? So like, uh, be, I mean, best like in this case example, I put the best is free dog food. Uh, and we're going to put the screenshot on your screen right now. And what you see is that basically now Google actually picks up these uh, foods, these dog foods. It puts the Google shopping ratings. It puts the lowest price, basically. And it also pulls reviews both from Google shopping, but also from affiliate sites. So you can see on the screenshot I put, uh, it grabbed the 9.8 out of 10 for that food out of Wolf Whiskers, which is an affiliate site. It also does the price comparison. So you get to buy from like the cheapest retailer. Uh, and also it adds these kind of labels like low price. I can imagine more of these, you know, it's, it's kind of like similar to what we have on um, affiliate sites, right? Like, you know, best for this, best for that, et cetera. Like you can see how they are like pulling some of that in SERPs. And I would imagine that might eat a little bit of CTR from affiliate sites actually, and seeing more of this on more queries. Cause I don't see it on all queries these days, but uh, some of these are very impressive. And actually I've had some versions of this where you have these kind of like badges on top and you can like the badges are like puppies, senior, uh, you know, allergies, etc. And then I could filter uh, these foods for that, for example, and have this dynamic filter in there. It would just show me the foods that match all the criteria I've just ticked, for example, always in the sub. So like that kind of results, uh, I think we might see more of it. And it's like, you know, people will be like, oh my God, I got penalized by Google, etc. You did not, you probably ranked the same, but like more clicks go to this kind of stuff. So yeah, I could see, I could see that growing. And that's what I'm saying. Like I can, I can imagine the future of Google Sales being a mix of like, kind of like AI generated content mixed with real life experiences. Like imagine they might not need as many organic results. They might put more videos, more like unboxing videos, that kind of stuff when you build that kind of products or like uh, the video of like a dog eating it, something that feels that adds the human touch that AI doesn't have, you know? Um, but that's probably not for next year. That's probably for like a, a little bit further away. Um, before we close this, I wanted to go through what we have on Twitter. So I gave you the link as well, Mark, so you can check as well. There's uh, some really interesting responses there. Okay, um, just give us your favorite so one. My, so my my favorite one being uh, Chris uh, Tsitsas, um, butchering that pronunciation, apologies, <laughs> but I said, AI content will become self-aware, far <laughs> outnumbering human written content. It will brutally murder its predecessor in its quest for the singularity to be the only source of information for our species, thus paving the way for the future enslavement of us. Well, Within maybe next not next months. year, maybe that's 2024. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, obviously, you know, with uh, ChatGPT and all that being sort of released recently, a lot of people have AI, um, comments um shall we say um I, I would say that um so one interesting one is from charles float he says kind of what you said earlier in um you know not much will change 95 percent of stuff will be the same he says that the same shit will continue to work google will make slightly more effective algorithm updates that will continue 
to gradually improve its detection of certain techniques, but not within the year. Yeah. Um, I think that's pre pretty bang on the money there. I think uh, Jamie has an interesting one as well. He's like, your age becomes more considered. This site was around before the AI took over. Mm, I'm not sure. I think it's like a very unelegant solution for Google. Like if you resort to this as an engineer, you failed, you know? It's like, it's like you can't be like top board class engineers and just rely on that. I think your age always matters to some extent, but I'm not sure it becomes more important. Uh, a clamp down on easy to fake things like this person does not exist as part of the EAT shift. Ah, uh, it's like, I, 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 I mean, sure, they don't want this, but like, is it worth making an I, algo for I, that? I, I think it's going to, I think it's going to go the other way. I think we're going to see more like video deep fakes and like mm. really convincing things come out there. Um, that's going to wreak havoc in you know, certain spaces. Yeah. Um, so maybe there will be a following clamp down on, on things like that, but I'm just not sure. Is it, is it possible to, um, detect that or to clamp down on that but i feel it's easier to like clamp down on like shit sites with links where like okay does mayo clinic says is a good site uh than it is that to analyze every single image on the internet to try to see if it's ai generated you know uh in terms of costs it's like it's quite different in terms of processing costs you know <laughs> um multimedia hg videos created by site owners become a stronger seo ranking factor for blog version yeah i could see that actually i could see just uh auto rank becoming a bigger thing yeah like also like building your authority in the eyes of google like we had that we had the authorship with google plus right it's just google plus was such a failure they had to cancel it but for some time we even had the photos of people that right wrote the article in google right it, it was taken away but it was actually something great like it'd be great if they could actually partner with a big social network or something or several and then just actually you can connect these things together and be like that would be a great way to make sure people are actually experts you know um, so that, I think I could see that I could see authorship becoming bigger. I think I could have put that in mind actually. You want to say something? Yeah. So Keith from Minted Empire, uh, said that his 2023 prediction is that we'll see a new wave of Google generated featured snippets that are more accurate than ever before. Um, I think he's sort of implying that rather than taking other, other people's content, they just, you know, use AI to create, create their own, which is, it's still kind of taking other people's content and yeah, you know, just in a more disguised yeah. way. It's, I guess, I guess because the AI did it, it's, un it's unique. It's their own. Well, um, the thing is like, yeah, we talked about this know. yesterday, right? It's like Google could do that, but if they start killing website like publishers, eventually they, they run out of source material for AI. And that's a huge issue because if people stop publishing on the web, like uh, deep content, etc., not just like a tweet or something, um, it's going to be complicated for the AI to learn new things in such a good way that it has so far because it's using the converts on the internet. And so it's kind of a chicken and the egg problem. Like Google needs to come up with a solution that preserves publishers so that good quality content still gets published while at the same time using the quality of life improvement that AI brings so that people get a better experience using Google so they don't shift to something else that could disrupt them otherwise. Um, and that's kind of like the, um, the challenge for them. And, uh, and I don't think it's just going to be like Google writes all search results and all content is gone. It's impossible because AI just dies from its lack of original content from this point. So that's, yeah, chicken and the egg problem. That's, a, that's an interesting one. Uh, Nishite Lady said, uh, I think the AI generated content has to be on Google's agenda. I don't necessarily mean detection, but I think it would become even more important for sites to have original research photos and videos to prove that their product is correct, their info story is correct and not AI generated. So basically building an authentic brand, it kind of goes back to, to what I said, like uh, doing the real stuff, adding that human touch to content will uh, pay more dividends. I agree with that. May maybe not as much next year. I think next year will be this transition flux year where we kind of like figure out the technology. But I think eventually search results will also be a mix of uh, AI content with very, very human content to compensate for that AI content, what people hate. Uh, about AI. Uh, any other one that you saw? Roy said, Roy Cohen said, voice search is going to take over in no. 2023. <laughs> We've been making that prediction. No. I mean, we stopped making it because we kept making that prediction and kept getting it wrong. It, people it don't like really voice search. It doesn't search. seem like it's happening. Yeah. People don't like it. They don't want to talk. And that's the thing. If people don't like voice search, 
Uh, it's like I was I was thinking about that. I was like, oh, ChatGPT is great. Imagine if you attach like a voice UI to this, it could be actually useful. But I get annoyed after it starts. My phone answers to me for more than ten seconds. You know, it's like I and it's like if it gives me these long answers and like starts talking to me in that robotic voice, that would be terrible. Actually, I would hate using this. So I don't think voice search will take over. Uh, even then, even though it's like it could be possible with better AI. Uh, okay, anything else? Uh, no, just final one. Uh, Dom Wells from a F on Folio says it will continue to depend. I think that's the um, most accurate I think that's one. Accurate, yeah. I think that if I was only doing prediction like that, I'd be at a hundred percent for sure. Uh, so <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> All right. So this was the 300th podcast and the last podcast of the year. So if you are listening to this, thank you for tuning in. 300 podcast is kind of crazy. Uh, I can't believe you guys like listening to Mark and I that much. Thank you very much for everything, basically. Have a good Christmas. Happy New Year. We are back on Monday, uh, January 2nd, and we have a bunch of updates for the authority site system going live on the 1st of January. We will make a special announcement at the time. So watch out for our emails and we'll see you next year.